Hello, hello. Here we are. Hang a bit of loop here. It is currently 6.29 a.m. On Sunday the 28th of January 2024 and this is what we're up to today so played a little bit of this yesterday off stream and uh, it's basically I will let it speak for itself. If you don't know what Loop Hero is, you'll find out soon enough. I played for a little bit and I beat the first boss. All right. Well, a little bit. 10 hours. But some of that was paused for a long time. So don't worry about the 10 hours. Um, also, I know what I'm doing. So now we're going to power on through the tutorial. Also, today may be considered possibly... Uh, the first episode of something that I, I'm, I'm tentatively calling the demo disc, uh, or, or demo disc, or something along those lines. I don't know. I haven't figured out a name for it exactly yet. Um, but it's games that we might only play once for a few hours, muck around with, and then may never play again. Or maybe I'll get really into it and I'll play it for a long, long time. But either way, I'm figuring stuff out. So we'll jump in. We'll do the tutorial first. The stars in the sky are going out one by one, but no one notices it. No one can stop it. I'm racing to the last place where there's still hope. I need to make it before... before it's too late. The sounds of agony will quickly fade. The world will be destroyed. Even the memory of it will be gone. And even if there's absolutely no chance of bringing it all back, there will always be someone who is willing to do the impossible. In a place without space, without time, without memories. Where am I? I can't see anything except this path. My head's killing me. I remember only a skeleton with a staff up in the sky. This darkness was coming from him. Did he destroy everything around here? Just standing here won't do me any good, I guess. Change between adventure, traveling through the map, and planning, stop, traveling through the map, modes, press X, continue your journey by changing the game mode. I will, just a second, just gonna do something here. You can make it look like a CRT screen, like old TV, like old TV mode, which kind of like warps the image a little bit, it's kind of cool. Um, I think we'll just have it on full screen though. The CRT is fun and all, but yeah. Anyway, uh, okay. We're gonna highlight the hero on the map. We are gonna do it, but only when the map's like, yeah, about there, about sixty percent. Actually, you know what? Let's aim for. Eh, eh. Come on, do it. Oh, you're getting so close. Come on. I don't know if it's possible. Yeah, there we go. That'll do. Uh, all right, so. Uh, what I wanted to do, um, automatically pause the end of a loop, yep. Automatically pause after battle. Battle pause when hovering over units. Battle pause when hovering over items. Allow changing of fight speed, yes. Um, effects volume, we might turn down a smidgen. Otherwise, it's going to get very bleepy. I'm going to leave that as is. Um, but yeah, it's a fun little game. It looks really simple. If you don't know it, if you don't, if you haven't seen it before, it's uh, it might not look like much at all. Oh yeah, that reminds me. To start, and I will change this and speed it up, a lot but this is this is the basic speed that you start with 
And we'll do the tutorial at this speed just so that you can see exactly how cold it is. Cold? Cold's not the word. Slow. A living ball of slime. Quite a nuisance. They digest everything they can. Hey, I remember this creature. Maybe I just need to freshen up my memory and everything will go back to normal. Maybe. Maybe that's the only thing that's needed. Anyway, I missed what that said, but it just says, move around and fight shit. And then you collect stuff. It's hard to fight with your bare hands. I think there's an undigested weapon in the remains of that thing. Alright, so you go over, you have a look at your sword, you equip it. I think I remember there was a grove nearby. Are these even my memories? Or do they belong to that slime? Alright, you can use cards that are left over after defeating enemies to add various new objects to a map. That's what planning mode's for. Hold left trigger to pick a card, and then put it on the map. And it wants me to put it here for the tutorial. Here's what it is. Now you can continue your journey. So, slimes can spawn on the normal road, but finding these things will let other things spawn. It is a, a roguelike deck builder in a way. Um, anyway, you, you'll see, you'll see. And we are so going to speed this up, like as soon as this tutorial is done. Maybe even before then. It's a rat wolf. A forest rat wolf. I was right. Some emotional stress, a few vivid images, and a bit of adrenaline. I'll forget it all like a bad dream. I mean, I'll remember it all like a... Damn it. Good thing nobody heard that. You have a new sword. You should put it on. Oh, as you probably noticed, you can get new items and cards during battle. Some of these items have unique features, as do most of the cards. By holding right trigger and left trigger, choose an item or card, and you can expect its properties. Alright, so you can see that the sword, same damage, but it has an attack speed bonus. Woohoo, equip it. Um, rocks. We put rocks in places. Alright. Rock gives you extra health. Forest gives you plus 1% attack speed. I'll right, put the forest here, I guess. Good. So there's a mountain over there and a forest over here. The world's almost back. Branches and stones in my backpack are a sure sign of that. And that... You can see in the top right, lets you collect materials. Right. Some of your actions will yield resources that will, you will need later on, but not right now. That shouldn't stop you from looking at them right now, though. Which, it's a log and a rock. You get the idea. I think it's time I get some rest. The game itself is a journey on a looped path. Only you will decide when it's time for your hero to return to the camp. Either you or the fangs and claws of your enemies, of course. You can retreat almost any time, but a special animation will let you know when it's safer to do so, which is the little running man down the corner. He has the freshest moves I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, you can retreat, and you get to keep all your resources when you're at camp. If you're not at camp, you only get to keep a portion of them, and if you die, you keep even less. It's cold and dark here. A small fire can solve both of these problems. It's a nice place to set up camp. This is where all the resources you've gathered will come in handy. Who would have thought... Just have enough wooden stones to make a campfire. What a nice coincidence. Build a campfire using the building function while in a camp. Press the build button, select campfire, and place it. You know, that thing we just said. So there we go, now we have a campfire. Congratulations, you've beaten this annoying tutorial. You can now start with your first expedition. Or not, do as you wish. Yes, so. Uh, there's lots of different buildings to build at your camp. As far as like your roguelite stuff is concerned, this is the stuff that continues over between laps, loops, runs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, expeditions, I guess. We just have the basic expedition for now. Right. This path. Everything's wrong, but I remember. It looks like a completely different place. And it's empty again. Do my actions have any meaning? Like, I have a choice. If I need to give up and cry to save the world, I'm the worst saviour of all. Let's do it. So you can see it moves relatively slowly. Um, fuck that. I'm going to speed that up quite a bit. I'm going to put combat... We'll put it at two times for now. I will speed that up probably. You can see the movement's a lot quicker when it's... Alright, so we get ourselves a sword, because you never start with a weapon. Well, you can later, but... Ooh, and a pure damage ring to start with. That's good. Now, a beacon... A worthless landmark in a world with no direction. Plus 40% movement speed within range and 20% attack speed for all units. That's for you and the enemies. Um, I am going to put it here. 
Yes. And then we run again. And the rooster crowing means a day has passed. Now we got a shield. Now meadows. Meadows are cool. Right? So you can have a meadow, right? Meadows give you plus two HP at the start of every day. So when the rooster crows, you'll hear that down and you'll get some health back. But something really cool about this game, which I discovered after a little bit of playing, things change depending on the combination of where you put them, right? So you see this meadow is just a meadow. Um, what's it say? Earth covered with a thick carpet of grass. Nothing really interesting, unless you're a cow, of course. But then if I put this here next to the beacon, it becomes a blooming meadow. Flowers get a feel for the world and bloom with pleasant smells. And it heals me 3 HP at the start of each day, which doesn't seem like much, but you do get a lot of them. Um, so you slowly fill out the screen, you saw all the tiles and that sort of thing. And I collect materials up here that will, they're called noticeable changes. And then you, you know, I'll, t I'll talk more about that later, but basically materials that you'll add will do cool shit. Um, this one's a battlefield. The smell of blood and steel spawns a chest on an adjacent tile each loop. Enemies on the tiles around it can become ghosts when they die. So ideally, what I want to do with this one is put it pretty much here. Because then I get a new chest right at the start of my next loop. And this is a spider cocoon. All right, so this spawns spiders every day. So if we put the spider cocoon, let's say... Let's say we put it here. Right, and that'll spawn a spider on the road each day. Right? Dead. Armor. Armor's good. Another meadow. That's also good. But you can see with this meadow that was nothing, when I put this here, it bloomed. Got some rocks here too, so rocks are good. Now rocks, plus 3 HP to your total, and plus three more HP every adjacent rock or mountain. So I like to build sort of mountains off in the distance over here somewhere. Because they work quite well if you cluster them. And normally I wouldn't put all these meadows in the middle either. I'd put them sort of like up and around the, the edge of the mountain up here too. This is a cemetery. Spawn skeletons every three days. Now considering where we are on the road, I might just put this one here because it's going to take some time for that to grow a skeleton. And we got a weapon that's the same and a shield that's the same, so nothing nothing spectacular. And another meadow, which we'll put up there. All right, and you see the chest spawn, and it'll move out onto the road. There's some spiders up ahead, too. Ooh, got some good stuff. All right. That's some good armor. So it's level 2 armor. Way higher HP. Uh, and a ring. Attack speed, counter, regen per second, and evasion. Cool. Alright, moving on. So we got 420 HP. A couple more rings. Nothing particularly special because our ring is level 2. Shield's actually worse. Our vampire mansion. Our vampire mansion. Hungry eyes follow your every move through the holes in the roof. Adds vampires to battles on the tiles around it. And what we might do, we might just, rather than putting this particularly close to anything else, I might just put this here. Because then, any enemies that we fight along the road, there'll be vampires in the fight as well. So vampires don't spawn by themselves. They spawn in the range of the mansion when you're fighting something else, which you'll see in a sec. Back off, human. A vampire? Where are your lands? If your farmers need help, I'd be glad to offer it. No more lands. No more flock. Only hundreds of years of emptiness. And hundreds of years of hunger! Save yourself while you still can. I don't know how long I can keep my head straight. What hundreds of years are you talking about? Your mind is easy to trick. But you can't trick my hunger. It demands its fill. Every sip, every drop of blood will go to satiate it. I'm too weak. But you can help me. And I will set this crumbled world right. That's right. I'm doing this not just for myself, but for everyone. In the name of the greater good. So be grateful for my hard work and just let me bleed you dry. 
No. And then you kill him. Ooh, got a good shield out of it too. Vampires often owned our lands. They kept the peace and helped our settlements prosper. But this won't do at all. Now they're just pale shadows of their former selves, both physically and mentally. Apparently blood of other creatures can't sustain them. He wasn't joking about the hunger. Even the creatures around him were imbued with the power to drain someone else's life. Yeah, so when they spawn in a fight, any enemies that are obviously around this that spawn the vampires in a fight also get like vampirism as a trait. So they will heal when they attack you. Um, so we've got a sword that's the same. We've got a shield that's better. So we've got a, a level two shield, extra defense, same damage to all, and it has evasion, which is good. Uh, we'll put another rock up here because it gets a bonus when it's next to other rocks. And yeah, we'll put another. You know what? I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it next to this other one. Just so there's only one section of road here that we get a lot of vampires. Alright, we got another beacon too. So, this beacon. I might. I'm gonna put it. Kinda overlaps a little bit, doesn't it? Uh, we could put it. Yeah. You can see as you go, the world sort of starts to fill out. Alright, now we've got a mountain. Plus five for each adjacent rock or mountain, so put this up here amongst everything else. Now this one's Oblivion. A bit of the Lich's magic causes anything to be totally forgotten. It erases any established tiles and erases monsters from the road. So you can lose it, use it to, like, I could delete this cemetery with this skeleton in it. I could delete this. I could delete you know, just about anything. I could go, you can't delete the road tiles themselves, but I could go, oh, I'm not ready to fight those spiders. There's too many on that piece. I'm going to delete the spiders and then sort of resets it. You don't get the XP or items from beating them, though. Uh, another mountain. And then we'll go into the cemetery and fight a skeleton. Okay. Shitty weapons still. Another spider cocoon. Now, with this spider cocoon, it's putting it out on the adjacent tile once per day, right? But it's only got one adjacent tile. Now, if I put a spider cocoon here, it has three adjacent tiles. So it sort of picks one of those three tiles and spawns something on it once per day, so it will spread them out, which is handy. New dawn, new day. Another chest to open. Ooh, tier three armor. So we get pure damage and counterattack damage and a big bump in HP. Another Oblivion card. Sure, I'll take it. Lovely. Alright. So we got another rock. We've got a grove to set up. Now groves are pretty cool. Um, so groves, a gentle rustle of leaves, a crack of a dry branch, and a feeling of being watched. It spawns a rat wolf every two days. Rat wolves can move to adjacent tiles. So this is an actual road thing like the cemetery is. And it will make enemies spawn in it, but then the rat wolves can actually walk away to the next bit of road. Um, you know what, let's put, let's put the rat wolves here. Good shield, lose the damage to all low and only get plus one defense, so I'm going to keep that. Also this beacon, put it here. Nothing spectacular. Moving on. And see, walking through that grove gave me that twig. So you collect more resources as you go. Ooh, tier 3 shield. With pure damage. That's good. That's just bonus damage to my attacks. I think. I think. I'm only... I know it's, I said that I'd put 10 hours into it, but some of that was paused and me just sitting there doing nothing. But, um... I'm relatively new because I've only just beaten the first boss. We've got some more meadows that we'll put up here. Got another mountain to put up here. And we have a road lantern. A road lantern. Small spot of light in this grim world. It reduces the maximum number of spawning enemies on the tiles around it. Now what I'm going to do with this one, because I don't want to get overrun later, right, I'm going to put this here. 
And what it's going to do is it's going to... Anything that's touching, right? I could put it here. Yeah, I can put it in a, a, wherever places, but within range of it, the enemies are only going to be... Uh, uh, I think it's a total of three. I think you can get four normally. But if I put this here, anything in the blue will only get three. There'll only ever be three spiders coming out of that. And rat wolves, spiders, etc. Like, I could get four. So I can only get three across these. But I could get four here. Um, I don't know if the blue hand cursor is probably the best thing for this either. Uh, give me a second. Let's go with... Um, go with the little sword. Alright, so I've got this little sword here. Okay. Oh, good to put myself on Do Not Disturb. Good morning, Red Sack. Uh, one second. There we go, that works better. Okay. Did you move on? Now, different enemies will drop different things or have chances to drop better stuff. That sort of thing. This is a tier 4 ring. Big boost to attack speed. Big boost to evasion. Well, little boost to evasion. But I lose the counter and I lose the regen. Better sword, though. Increases my damage, which is very nice. Okay. Now, actually, hold on. Do these meadows first, because there's something else I want to show you. So, I found this out by accident. From just because they get bonuses by putting them next to each other. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to put them in a square. Putting three by three of rocks and mountains turns it into something else. So this makes a mountain peak. A stone giant could support the sky itself if it weren't already gone. Gives you a big bonus to HP. Plus five max for every adjacent mountain and rock tile. So when I put them around here, there'll be more bonuses. Just like it's a big mountain. And, but it spawns a harpy every two days. So there'll be an enemy that'll come out of here and it'll just fly to a random spot on the road and it'll fight. So you can see as you play on, tougher and tougher enemies will come along. Uh, for a grove, let's put a grove here. New day, bit of healing. Not maxed out healing though. Ooh, that's a good that's a good weapon. Good little uh to dirk. Very nice. Little stabby. Uh level four ring. We get plus two defense, I get a drop in attack speed, but I get vampirism. Vampirism is very handy. Okay, Got another spider cocoon. Um Let's put the spider cocoon. Yeah. Crappy weapons. Good armor, though. Yeah, big jump in armor. Or max HP. I lose the pure damage in the counter, though. So, got some more cards now. Treasury. This one's new. So, thick walls guard all kinds of riches from thieves and previous owners. Gives a random basic resource after placing anything on an empty tile around it. Must be surrounded by empty space when you build it. So I can only build it in those spots, because I've got mountains and shit up here. But, what I like to do with them... Um, I might even put it here. Put it here. What I like to do with them is put them as close to the mountains and stuff as possible. Because, as I then throw them out. Right, you can see I got resources from that. And I'll put a meadow like here. But my goal is to surround this with other things and then you'll see what happens. Uh, cemetery, let's connect it to the other one. Oh, this is spawned now because I put down 10 mountains or rocks too. But this is a goblin camp. I oh, know, I'm throwing a lot at you at once. This is a goblin camp. Goblin camp the sound of backstabbing can be heard from miles away. It spawns a goblin on an adjacent tile once a day. 
appears for every 10 mountains or rock tiles. Uh, also, this weapon that I just got is really fucking good. I'm going to equip that too. Yeah, just shredding through these guys. New shield, not as good defense, but it has vampirism. I do lose a chunk of damage, but vampirism is very handy. New mountain, yep. Chuck that on here. Alright, you can see the harpy just came out of the thing too. It's flying over. This is the harpy, and he's going to land somewhere over here. New rock. New battlefield. Alright, so we're going to put the battlefield, let's say, here. Now, you can see the, the radius around a battlefield, right? If they overlap, if two battlefields overlap, they get this. The not wasteland path with slime spawning. These paths not only ghosts are created on the battlefield, spawns a blood clot every four days. Every four days, a tough enemy comes out of here. That's why you kind of want to spread your battlefields out a little bit for the chests. Or be strong enough to deal with the monsters. I got this, right, which is like a rare quality sphere, but because it's only tier 3 and I have a tier 5 sword at the moment, it's not that great. It has a lot of perks, but it's not that great. And another rock. Take another rock. A harpy. No. What do you mean, no? You want to save the world. You want to ask for our help. Our answer is no. How did you... But why no? We see far away. We see deep inside. For a long time there's been an emptiness instead of the sky. It doesn't stop us from seeing. Your saving of the world is one-sided and naive. Each person sees their own way to save the world. That's why no one will ever join you. Fine, I don't fully understand it, but tell me your version. How do you see saving the world? By my progeny and kin. May they live and be strong. May they join the cycle of life and death. That is life. That is the world. I will kill you and feed your flesh to my starving younglings. And life will go on. And how many lives can your blade prolong as you kill again and again? Only one. I don't want you to die. And I don't want your children to die of hunger. Please, try to see reason. If my mission succeeds, the harpies can have all the sky and all the hunting grounds they need. I can't feed my children with your beautiful words. Farewell. And then she tries to kill you. I feel awful. By fixing one evil, I'm causing another. There's no home for harpies except in the highest mountains, but there's no food there. I can't even imagine how they managed to survive if their mountains were cut off from reality. Alright, we got another ring, which is meh. We got a shield, which is pretty good. Pretty good. We would lose our vampirism. We got a ring that has pretty good defense too. Hum. Hum. Alright, well, I'm, I think I might put the shield on. Because the ring, I would lose 11% vampirism for 3 defense. Whereas this one, I would lose 9% vampirism for 6 defense. Yes, math. G'day, Saint. Welcome, welcome. How you doing? Uh, now, meadows. We're going to chuck it back up here. Oh, I should have put it here. Never mind. Oh, well. Road Lantern. Alright, we want to make sure that the goblins don't get overboard, and also the graveyard probably not getting overboard is a good plan as well. I'm going to chuck the Road Lantern down here. Because goblins... Goblins and skeletons tend to mess me up. Goblins attack very, very quickly, and skeletons are quite tanky. Stop. Where did these goblins come from? I don't remember remembering you. We remembered ourselves. Now, give us all your things. You have no idea what's going on, right? Why don't you help me restore order in this world first? You can do everything you want when I'm done. Goblin must rub! Now, no other order in the world. Fair enough. Guess I don't have any objection to that. Oh, wait. I do have one. How about... I murder you. It's strange how these creatures appeared here on their own. Maybe it means everything is actually not so bad and the world's trying to restore itself. That or even the apocalypse isn't enough to get rid of some pests. Alright, so. Uh, another shield that's pretty meh. You get new armor though. Tier 4 armor. And it's rare. 
We got pure to extra damage and vampirism. Fucking hell yeah. Bonus. Sick. Alright. Fight a skelly. New shield. Alright, it's tier 5. Has one less defense, but has vampirism and defense. So it's not actually one less defense. It's actually two more defense. Because that's a thing, I guess. Alright, we get some more meadows, some more mountains, etc. Uh, let's put you... Here. And let's put you here. And let's put you... Here we go, ready? And now that cracks open. Alright, so we got a whole bunch of shit just then. We also got some more meadows. And some more rocks. And then over in our gear... We got some more armor. Not quite as good as our current armor. Um, could be. Doesn't have any vampirism, but it has regen instead. Hmm. And we get extra defense. Yeah, alright, let's do that. Now. You can see you lose your old gear when you replace it, too. It's like you're forgetting it. New rock. Alright. Now we get two chests at the start. Alright. So that's pretty shitty damage. It has damage to all, though, which means it damages everything on each hit. The shield... Uh, the shield's pretty good. Pretty good shield. This is also tier 5 shield. As... But my, my one currently has, what? 17? 17 defense and 9 vampirism. And this has 15 defense, 8 vampirism. But it also has 8% evasion. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna keep wearing the one I've got, I think. You see, there's only three spiders here. It would have been four. Weapons garbage, armor's garbage. New meadow. Now, because this is empty now, the empty treasury, treasury without treasure, an empty shell, a sorry sight, especially for its stone guardians that have slept through their eternal watch. Now it will spawn a gargoyle every three days, which much like the harpy, will just fly over onto the map. You can see the harpy here. Much It'll fly over onto the map and it'll just be hanging out. got more meadows. Um, what I might do is I might put it here. And put one there. More meadows. You can also put meadows next to whatever. Right, as we learnt right at the start. Doesn't matter what they're next to. As long as it's not empty or another meadow. They turn into shit. Good armor. Real good armor. Pack that on. Uh, the ring's pretty good. Because of the regen. But I'm going to leave it for now. Spider cocoon. Let's find another spot for a spider cocoon here. Uh, how about... How about... Yeah, that'll do. You just make your way around the map. Collect resources, you build up your map. Vampire Mansion, once again, hey? Okay, so putting it here is not going to give me any extra tiles of it, but it will be putting down another thing. Ooh, we've got an arrow over him now. 69% 60, of the map covered. got some new bits and pieces. Nothing's really jumping out as being good, though. More rocks. 
Easy the Gargoyle coming over now too. Uh, and this is a Road Lantern, so... Let's, where is where is going to get fucking messy? Oh, there's another Goblin Camp up here. Put it there. Meta, meta, meta. Another Grove. Cat dogs. More rocks. More meadows. More rat dogs. We'll get a couple of good things here. That's a little bit of a drop in armor, but we get extra damage for it. And this one is a little bit of a drop in damage, but it's not because pure damage adds on top. So, actually a big jump in damage. Onwards! Ooh, that's a good shield. So, has damage to all and defense. Alright, let's do it. If I ring too. Pure damage. A little bit of a drop in vampirism. Got a gargoyle coming. He's nothing. Nothing. Regen per sec, 3.6 is pretty fucking good. That's pretty fucking good. I will have a sip. Sure thing, Saint. Sure thing. I'll put this grove down first real quick. Um, maybe I'll put it... Yeah. Alright, now you can see those blood clots are on the road now too. They're a bit tougher. See, I'm damaging the chest as well with that damage to all. Now, he turned into a ghost because he's on this bit of road. Another spider cocoon. Now, you don't have to put these down, by the way. I'm just... You can see in the top left, like up here, there's a bar. When it fills up, the boss spawns in. There, new weapon. Extra damage, one less damage to all, but extra damage in general. High attack speed. And it gives me regen, yeah, alright. This armor is pretty good too. The armor is a big bump. All mountains. Spiders. Another treasury. We can put a new treasury here. Because then as we fill these in, we can do both of them. All this stuff. Like, that has slightly more defense, sure. It does give me extra damage. Ever so slightly. But I think 9% chance to evade is probably good. Yeah, we see it come up pretty often. A battlefield. I'll put this here. Because we're already getting this shit anyway. Um, a meadow. Put that between them. A road lantern. Where are we going to get a whole bunch of shit? Here, I guess. Oh, actually... Put it there. Yeah, that'll work. 
because then that way I can chuck the grove in the middle and then they won't go too crazy. You rock. Beacon. Um, it's probably not a bad spot for it. Okay, we got some more meadows. We'll put one here. Spider cocoon. Let's uh, let's chuck it here, because then it can't spawn spiders. It's just down. And look, we're very close to spawning the boss too. Ooh, big jump in damage. No damage to all, but big jump in damage. Field. Might as well put on another one here. Because what's happening? Oop. The boss is here. Okay, so he takes over the camp. Incursion radiates with powerful energy that devours space and time itself. It's time to face the destiny of this world. And then there's the Lich's Palace, which will spawn on every piece that isn't already occupied. Uh, it was here that the sorcerer Omicron conducted his futile experiments in an attempt to stop the heat death of the universe. Every palace increases the Lich's HP and damage by 5%. Now, I can nuke them with the Oblivion cards. There's still two left, which is not great, but they're there. Also, I don't need to play anything else unless it's going to be in my favor. The shield has two less defense, but then it gives it back anyway, and it gives me vampirism. So I'm going to use that because I want to try and get as much health back as I can before I fight him. Because it's going to be... I don't know if I'm going to beat him. Because this is his first lap. And I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to beat him on the first lap. With the way my health's gone, I might not even make it to him. Oh, we got some rank 8 shit. Okay, hold on. Put that on. I'm going to put that ring on when I get to him. Actually, what's my regen at the moment? 3.6. Which is all coming from that ring. Uh, no, let's just rely on vampirism. And hope for the best. More rocks for more healing. Oh, not more healing, but more health. Get some more meadows. Okay, so that's one of them done. Another beacon. Which I'm going to put right here. That'll make the boss fight go a little bit quicker, even. Vampirism seems to be working out for me. Uh, everything's rank 8, so there's not really much of this that is going to help me. This has the same defense as mine, but gives me extra damage, but I lose my vampirism, so I'm going to keep that for a bit. This armor's better. This armor's even better. I might swap shields, unless I get a better one in the short term. Also, more rocks. Mountain. More rocks, more mountains. Oh, put that one there. Okay, what did I get? Did I get anything decent? 
bit of ring that gives me damage, damage to all, attack speed, evasion, and a sword that's pretty meh. Good shield. I lose the vampirism. Completely. And I saw I'd have no healing. So I'm going to hold on to the other one until we get to almost at the fight. And then I'm going to swap it out. I'm going to remember, like, around this slime to swap it. Good damage. choice to do that, but we are where we are. See, goblins fucking wreck you. This is why I needed to put that thing down early on. Uh, pure damage, damage roll, and vampirism. Give me that vampirism. Give me that vampirism. I don't think we're going to get another day to pass. Or maybe we will. But... Max HP is considerably less. Switch this, that, and I think that's all I really need to swap. I'm probably going to lose this fight. Yeah. him next time. I need these supplies to start and I've kind of skipped over the whole doing a couple of laps and then retreating. I can't believe it. Hey everybody, the boy managed to return. Survivors? Does this mean I'm not alone anymore? Where did you come from? Is there still a place without darkness? We don't know where we came from or that we can't remember. These few people are all that's left of our group, I think. How did I not close that window? I remember that I tried to... Anyway, I'll do it in a minute. You're not sure? We're not sure. We reached that conclusion based on the abandoned luggage left over and... Oh, luggage and leftover daily rations. Each day we see the signs of other people's presence around us, but as far as we know, they don't exist and never did. It's like we forgot them. Forgot them? Exactly. It's as if people are disappearing every day and we instantly forget they existed. Just like we forgot where we came from. And our families. Maybe even ourselves. My name's Yota. That I still remember. Everyone else's memories are not much better. That's why I remember so little about myself. Everything's forgotten. But wait, you said I managed to return? That means you remember I was here. Yes, that's why it's so important to us. We saw you leave, but you were gone before we could approach you. Listen, we can't keep wandering in this emptiness anymore. There's a campfire here and enough space for a few sleeping bags. Real luxury in these dark times. What do you say? Of course you can stay. I'd be very grateful if we could team up. I want to push everything. I want to put everything right. I'm only beginning to remember the world as it was before. But there's no point to it without other people. It's too lonely without them. Remember the world? I don't get what you're talking about. I'm too exhausted. But we'll be glad if you could help us. And we'll be glad to help you. Just don't ask us to follow you out there. I don't know how you managed to return, but... For us leaving, the group is too dangerous. I will ask no such thing of you. For now, I just want to have a place to return to. A place where I can hear other people's voices. This is the camp. We weren't joking about helping you. Here are the few things that survive the cataclysm and don't vanish. Don't become forgotten. Take it. You might need it. Yeah, here's some materials. Which is good. And now... I can build stuff. Right, so I still need more metal for a smithy. I can build a herbalist's hut, potions, 
You get potions, you get three of them each time. They refill to camp, unlocks the swamp card, and they heal 4% of your max HP. And also get a field kitchen. 10% of the campfire's healing power and unlocks the blood grove card. So, I don't... Hold on, how much have I got? I've got plenty of wood. What about stone? Plenty of stone. And food ration. I've got just enough, so I can do both. So let's do... Our food here. Do you know the difference between a good cook and a bad cook? The food made by a good cook's tastier. What, you are waiting for something more elaborate? Sometimes the truth's very simple. Look, I have a cauldron, a hearth, a couple of knives, a bucket of potatoes, three onions, and some ham. Nothing special. Everything's very simple. But give me a few minutes, and everyone in this camp will be running to my table, following the tasty smell of a good stew. Right. Now you got that. And you can upgrade your locations as well. So I could upgrade him, so I've got enough of the other materials and stuff, and it boosts shit. Um, we can also build our herbalist hut, which we'll chuck down here. It's a miracle we could find some fertile soil, and by a miracle, saved some seeds of precious healing herbs. But the real miracle is that all these healing poultices and balms still have some effect. Mm. We already lost many people because of the cataclysm. It would be nice not to lose more to any diseases. And these potions can help you as well. Take a vial or two on your trip, and your chances of getting back in one piece will be much higher. Alright, so now we got potions on our on our adventures. Um Right, and again we can upgrade. We can upgrade her for X amount of materials as well. Uh But VOD viewers, that's the end of this. We'll probably do another chapter where I hopefully beat the boss. But that's that's this chapter and what is probably the inaugural episode of Demo Disc. Um Demo Disc will be... I don't know if I'm settled with that name. I like it, but I feel like I could do more. Um, but... Uh, I'm going to jump around and do, like, you know, a few hours here and there of different games. It might be a few episodes. I could enjoy it enough that we jump into, like, a full series. You know, like your... Like your Elden Rings and, and stuff of the world. But... For now, this is what it is. And there's uh, plenty of older... VODs that I had in the longer style before I started recording them um, directly that uh, you know they're, they're one-offs effectively and they're in a one-offs playlist um, which I will probably tentatively rename to Demo Disc Season 1 or Season 0 or something I don't know I'll figure it out it's a work in progress but if you're watching this tomorrow 10 years from now long after I'm gone you're awesome and I'm sure you'll hear from me again I will catch you next time <laughs>